Hello everyone, Aslan Historian here. In the 16th century, explorers and soldiers of fortune sent by the Spanish crown wandered into a land then unknown to Europe, a land dominated by colossal mountains, dense jungles and unforgiving deserts, a land inhabited by a myriad of nations and peoples who, by the time of the Spanish arrival, had come under the rule of the largest and most powerful indigenous state in the New World. This colossal empire, known by the locals as the Tahuantinsuyu and by the Europeans as the Inca Empire, would exist within the realm of the most impressive mountain chain in the southern hemisphere, the Andes. The valleys of the Andes were home to the Inca and their tributaries, just as they were home to a long list of nations and peoples before them, who developed cultures, institutions and technologies that allowed them to get the best out of their mountainous homeland and the diverse landscapes that cover it. Unfortunately, the memory of these pre-Incan peoples and their achievements would be largely lost, as the records from before the European invasion weren't made in letters, and also because of the loss of cultural institutions and elements produced by Spanish colonialism. Yet, we know that these ancient peoples and their cultures existed, although our knowledge of them is still quite limited, as archaeology has its limits. Back in the early 20th century, our understanding of the early history of the Andean cultures was even more limited, and proof of that was the fact that academia lacked the answer to a rather critical question. Where did the Andean cultures come from? And were they native to the area? Or did they come from somewhere else? Today, we'll talk about a man who dedicated his life to study the ancient Andes and whose work helped to answer those central questions, a man who would revolutionize our understanding of the ancient Americas, Julio Cesar Tello. A small intro to the Andes. Before we talk about Dr. Tello and his work, we need to clarify something, more concretely, the definition of Andes. We need to understand that there is more than one concept of Andes in academic literature, and here we are going to talk about two specific concepts, the geographical Andes and the cultural Andes. The geographical Andes are a mountain range that stretches alongside the western edge of South America, from the Sierra Nevada de Mérida in Venezuela to the hills of the Mitra Peninsula in the Argentine side of Tierra del Fuego. Within the range, the Andes feature an astonishing variety of climates and environments from the dry steep of the Altiplano to the Magellanic forests, locally known as Selva Fria, from the Paramo Tundra to cloud forests. The mountains are also source of numerous rivers which bring life to some of the driest regions on the planet and also the water source of the largest river basin on Earth, the Amazons. Parallel to this space, and including the nearby Pacific lowlands of South America, we have the cultural Andes, an entity whose definition is still subject of debate among experts. For decades, the exact definition of an Andean cultural area has been subject of the work of many academics, like American anthropologist Alfred Kruever, who in 1923 classified the native societies of the Americas in areas based on their cultural similitudes and crafted one for the Andean cultures that was roughly equivalent to the lands once controlled by the Inca. After that, and just as the academic knowledge on the region improved, other authors proposed new versions of this concept, like Peruvian archaeologist Luis Sombreras, who in 1981 defined the Andes as a cultural macro area spanning from Lake Maracaibo's basin in Venezuela to the Los Lagos region in Chile thus encompassing almost the entire geographical Andes. Other authors haven't been as inclusive, as is the case of Mexican linguist Ernesto Díaz Coder, who proposed a much more restrictive definition of the Andean cultural area back in 1998. In this version, the Andean cultural area extends from the Cauca Valley in Colombia to the Norte Chico region of Chile. This difficulty to properly define an Andean cultural area reflects the great diversity of cultural and ethnic developments in the region before the European contact. Authors like Wedel Bennett identified some more or less common cultural traits across the Andes, and since the 1940s, 
These traits have served to model the very concept of an Indian cultural zone. Nevertheless, these characteristics are often overshadowed by the great diversity of languages, material traditions, and political developments, which often blur the limits of the cultural Andes, making it difficult to set them apart from the neighboring cultural regions, like the Istmo Colombian, Chacoan, and Fuegian ones. With these facts in mind, we can start to comprehend the Herculean endeavor that has been to properly describe and understand the development of the Andean cultures before the European contact and before the rise of the Tahuantinsuyu. And one of the key figures behind this monumental work was a man who traded medicine for the study of his country's past. The doctor who became an archaeologist Julio César Tello Rojas was born in the Peruvian town of Huarochiri in 1880, the son of a well-respected family of small farmers who, according to some authors, had links to the indigenous pre-colonial elites of the region. Tello's childhood was relatively peaceful, despite the turbulent times Peru was going through back then, in the aftermath of the War of the Pacific. He grew in a Quechua-speaking household and was raised in the traditions of his people. Alongside this traditional formation, Teo attended the local school, where he became well known for being a pretty good student, so at age 13, his paternal aunt decided to invest in the boy's education and sponsor him to go to Lima and pursue a higher education. Unfortunately for the young Teo, his father died in 1895, and this brought him serious economic issues, so he had to become a domestic worker to pay for his education. And look, for a cheaper place to live as he was no longer able to pay his rent. Fortunately for him, one of his school friends was the son of the famous Peruvian writer and politician Ricardo Palma, and after meeting Tello, Palma was so impressed by the boy's academic enthusiasm that he offered Tello to live and work in the National Library of Peru, where Palma was the director. Tello would continue his education and in 1900 he would enter the University of San Marcos to study sciences, and in 1902 he would start his studies in medicine. During this time he would keep his work in the National Library where he would get familiar with the academic knowledge on Peru available back then. As part of his lectures he would read an 1897 article on trepanning in which the authors described a particular set of schools that were pretty familiar to him, as Tello himself had seen and even touched the aforementioned schools when his brother collected them back in 1888. This finding would inspire him to know more about the topic, and more importantly, to know more about the past of his hometown, and eventually, his country. His interest in ancient trepanning grew over the following years, so he, alongside some friends, organized amateur expeditions to collect ancient schools in 1905 and 1906, which ended up being troublesome for him, as he often had problems with the police for collecting human remains. By mid-1906, Tayo's research had made him confident enough on his knowledge on trepanning that he offered a conference on the subject titled La Craniotomía en el Perú Prehistórico at the National Library of Peru, for the members of the Geographical Society of Lima. Tello continued his studies in medicine and became a doctor in 1908, year in which he presented his thesis titled The Antiquity of Syphilis in Peru. By this point, something had become abundantly clear for Tello. His interest in medicine had been surpassed by his interest in the past, and over the next decades he would dedicate his life to anthropological and archaeological research and he would begin his formal career in these fields in 1909, year in which he would travel to the US to study anthropology at Harvard University. From 1909 to 1911, Tayo studied at Harvard, where he met many important figures in the history of anthropology. Some were his teachers, like William Farabee and Alfred Tozer, and others people familiar with his work, like Alice Hartlicka whom he would partner with to carry out an anthropological expedition to Peru in 1913. Between 1911 and 1914, Tello would tour the most important universities and museums in Europe with a scholarship provided by the Peruvian government, and in 1912, while in London, he would meet and marry Olive Mabel Chessman, who would accompany her Peruvian husband back to Lima in 1913. 
The Road to Chavin and Beyond Once in Peru, Tello would dedicate himself to improve the state of academic institutions in the country, beginning with the National Museum, where he would serve as a director of the newly created archaeology department, from which he would work to save archaeological sites across the country. He would quit his office in 1915, but his work to study and protect Peru's archaeological heritage was just beginning. From 1915 onwards, Tello would carry out numerous archaeological expeditions across Peru, and he would also join numerous foreign expeditions to this country. Most of these would be carried while he worked as professor of archaeology at the University of San Marcos, where he started giving classes in 1918. Between 1919 and 1921, Tello would join forces with philanthropist Victor Larco Herrera to rescue and study archaeological materials from the Nazca and Pura regions, and while working with these materials, which were predominantly pieces of ancient pottery, Tello would recognize regional patterns and styles, including one he dubbed as the Chavin culture, in honor of the ancient ruins of Chavin Nehuantar, located in the present-day Peruvian department of Ancash. In 1921, Tello published a book titled Introduction to the Ancient History of Peru, in which he offered an abridged version of the conclusions of his studies while working with Larco. In this book, Tello not only introduced the Chavin culture to academia, he also proposed that said culture had its roots in the Amazon basin, and that it constituted evidence of the autochthonous origin of the Peruvian civilizations, spanning from the aforementioned Chavin all the way to Etahuantinsuyu. This last affirmation was revolutionary, as it went against the understanding of Andean cultural development of its day. Particularly, it was the polar opposite of the ideas proposed by German archaeologist Max Uhle, who between 1904 and 1917 had become the leading expert on Andean archaeology in Peru. Uhle had proposed that the Andean cultures could trace their origins to the Maya area. In fact, his hypothesis stated that every single quote-unquote high civilization in the New World could trace its roots to the Maya. This idea was well received among the Peruvian intelligentsia, as it reinforced ideas about the inferiority of the Peruvian natives used by criollo elites to justify their attitudes and policies against native rights, this by denying that natives were capable of material and cultural progress without foreign input, and playing straight into the racial ideas of the day which stated the need to, quote-unquote, improve the race of the natives through miscegenation with the, quote-unquote, superior race, as defended by the controversial warrior Clemente Palma, son of Ricardo Palma. Tello's thesis went against this whole conception by defending that native Andeans had the potential to create sophisticated cultures, and they had done so in the past, without any influence from overseas. He would defend this proposal against Ule's diffusionist ideas in 1928 at the International Congress of Americanists in New York City. At the conference, Tello debated with Ule, who attended the event as representative of the Ecuadorian government. Tello questioned the hypothesis made by the German academic back in 1924, when he had presented a conference in Gothenburg, stating that not only all quote-unquote high civilizations in the Americas had their common origin in the Maya region, but also that this Proto-American culture had its roots in Central Asia. This conference gave Tejo's hypothesis on the origin of the Andean cultures a lot of attention, and it appealed to an emerging intellectual movement that had emerged in Peru in response to both Croyo nationalism and the economic inequality fostered by the Peruvian establishment, the indigenismo, which would eventually become incredibly influential in 20th century Peru. After the New York conference, Tello returned to Peru and helped pass a law protecting archaeological sites and materials in the Peruvian Congress, where he had been serving a second period as a representative since 1919. Over the following years, Professor Tello would keep working in education, historical conservation, and archaeological exploration. He would organize numerous expeditions to different regions of Peru, including a particularly notable one in 1937 to the Marañón River Basin and his studies would help him make numerous pioneering conclusions on the cultural evolution and dynamics of the ancient Andes, like the interactions between coastal communities and mountain ones, which would be largely based in his study of the funerary sites of the Paracas Peninsula. 
which ancient culture he had first described back in 1925. Teja would overcome tumultuous episodes in Peruvian history, from the local consequences of the 1929 economic crisis to the political turmoil created by the coup d'etat led by Sanchez Cerro in 1931. He would also help native rural communities to protect their historical heritage and their lands. In 1939, Tello attended the International Congress of Americanists in Mexico City, where he would not only defend the autochthonous origin of Andean civilizations, he would also propose that the Chavín Cotosh cultural complex he described back in 1921 was the actual quote unquote root of what was colloquially known as ancient Peru. At that conference, Tello would also present his proposed chronology of the evolution of Andean cultures, which he divided in four stages, with the oldest dating back to the second millennium before the common era and the most recent Piquitat of the Inca. The last years of Professor Tello would be extremely productive, as he would continue his expeditions across Peru, and in 1945 he would become director of the newly established National Museum of Anthropology and Archaeology in Lima. The Sixth Cradle Two years later, in 1947, Julio Cesar Tello Rojas, the man who became known as the father of Peruvian archaeology, died from cancer. He was buried with honors and according to his last will, his remains were relocated a year later to the National Museum of Anthropology, where they remain to this day. After his death, Tello's work remained central for the development of archaeology in Peru and other Andean nations, as many subsequent works were aimed to either refute or confirm Tello's hypothesis. Over the next two decades, archaeology in the Andes bloomed, featuring the works and research of experts like Rafael Larco, Gordon Wiley, John Rowe, and Louis Binford. Alongside those works, the question about the roots of the Andean cultures continued to be addressed, and while Ulus Maya hypothesis was discarded within Tello's lifetime, other divisionist proposals were made later on, like that defended by Betty Meggers and her colleagues, in which ancient Andean cultures would have their roots in Yaman culture castaways, which would have tripped all the way from Japan to modern-day Ecuador, being this the origin of the ancient Valdivia culture. This proposal, made in the early 1960s, has been largely abandoned by academics since the 1980s as new studies on the evolution and development of ceramics in South America have given more support to an autochthonous development. Today, most academics accept a fully American origin for the pre-Columbian Andean cultures, but there are still ongoing debates about how exactly these cultures developed in their early stages. Some defend the idea proposed by Tello, in which native Andeans developed their own cultures in perfect isolation. But over time, new evidence has rendered this model obsolete, as genetics and other scientific disciplines have proven contacts between the Andes and other regions of the Americas in pre-Columbian times. Today, the main theories on the origin of the Andean cultures are the Hologenist model proposed by Luis Lumbreras and the Alloctonist model proposed by Federico Kaufman, both of which emerged as an answer to the need to incorporate the pre-Columbian non-Andean influences into the region's cultural evolution. Kaufman's proposal is based on the premise that the Valdivia culture had the oldest known ceramics in South America at the time of its publication, and it features a model in which the Ecuadorian lowlands were not only the cradle of the Andean cultures, but also the origin of Mesoamerican cultures, whose precursors would have migrated from the Ecuadorian coast to Central America. This model isn't supported by many experts, as the evidence supporting an autochthonous development of the Mesoamerican cultures is quite abundant, although experts recognize the presence of later pre-Columbian exchanges with Istmo Colombia and the Andes. Finally, the model proposed by Lumbreras is integrationist in nature, as it recognizes the autochthonous root of the Andean cultures while also recognizing the relevance of cultural interchange for the pre-Columbian development of the Andes, as the region received important contributions from other parts of the Americas, like corn from Mesoamerica and ceramics from its Colombia. Back in 1910, research on the cultural history of the pre-Columbian Andes was at its infancy, and today there's still a lot we don't know about the region's historical evolution. Yet, science has come a long way since the days in which Tello debated Ulus proposals. 
Today, the Andes are widely accepted as one of the cradles of civilization, and evidence suggests that this region was the first to see urban development in both the western and southern hemispheres. For thousands of years, numerous peoples, nations and cultures thrived in this region, and unfortunately, much of their history and memory is gone for good. Yet their legacy is still out there, and we can use it to have a glimpse into a world we still have a lot to understand about. There are still many questions to answer. Was Tiwanaku an empire? What was the exact purpose of the Nazca Lines? How close was the relationship between the Northern Andes and Western Mesoamerica? Questions which answers will keep specialists busy for generations to come, specialists that will continue the work done by that pioneer, the doctor who became a guide into the mysteries of the Andes, Julio Cesar Tello. Thank you so much for watching this video everyone, if you enjoy my work please like, share and subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to visit my discord. This has been Astan Historian, and I'll see you next time.